Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing Academy and today we're going to talk about bag work and if you see all my hashtags I put on my social media I'm always talking about more bag work and less running. I don't necessarily hate running but for me the average person who's maybe watching this channel are not professional fighters and don't have the luxury of being able to train all day. So for me it makes more sense instead of running 10k and spending you know what, how many hours a day running use that time to improve your technique improve the skill of the sport you're working on and fighting we all have so many things to work on so stop wasting that time running and put it into functional training so today's episode is going to be on purposeful bag work a lot of times people think of bag work only as this tool to use to get tired so people come on this bag and they throw all of these random combinations but you want to do bag work with the purpose of improving your fighting improving your sparring improving your technique so today's video I'm going to give you some different ways to improve some do's and don'ts of your bag work so for example you might want to work flow on the bag okay which you might want to work your combinations or you might want to sit there and work just your one strike to improve that one strike you might want to work it for power so you might do as much power shots as you can you might do it as a single power double power triple power so many different options okay Further videos down the line, I'll show you how to use the bag to improve your movement and your footwork, to improve your combinations. Just remember, when you hit the bag, have a purpose, improve on it, and keep getting better in your overall martial arts development. So the first thing you want to look at before you even hit the bag is what gloves you're using. And the, what I hate is when I see people doing bag work with these big gloves, okay? If your purpose is to get your shoulders tired, yeah, these are the big heavy gloves are the ones you want. But in my style of fighting, it's really important to know which knuckles you're hitting with. If I'm using these big gloves, I can't really feel my knuckles land on the bag. So that's why a bag glove is really important. Even on some of my Instagram videos, you'll see me do bag work with without even gloves on because I want to make sure I'm punching with the right part of my knuckle. And it toughens your hands too many times, especially MMA fighters, if you're not toughening your hands in a four ounce glove, that's how you can break your hand. So by punching the bag bare knuckles or with smaller gloves, you focus on the knuckles and it helps strengthen the hand. You don't want to just throw randomly. You want to be able to throw your strike and know which particular knuckle you're landing with. Traditional martial arts, you'll always see landing with the big two knuckles. Knuckles. But in some styles of boxing technique, you might want to punch with the bottom two, you know, and you want to toughen those two knuckles because if you don't, and then when you do land with them, that's how you're going to hurt your hand. Okay, so the second thing we're going to talk about other than the gloves now is bag time and rounds, okay, and that's a big focus. And that has to do with purpose. If your purpose is to improve your conditioning for your fight, then it's important that you do your rounds in your fight time. So in bazooka style, I like to do fight rounds closer to the fight, right? So if we're gonna try to exhaust ourselves, make sure we can handle the three round pace. And you know, if you're an MMA fighter, you might do three five minute rounds. If you're kickboxing, you're doing three three minute rounds. So you wanna make sure you test your conditioning. But if I'm now working on some sort of technique, you don't necessarily Necessarily have to have rounds. You can go for as long as you want and you can stop the bag in between. So for example, if I'm working my just my right hand, boom, I can hit, I can stop, I can assess, I can feel like, well, I didn't really like the contact on my knuckles. My elbow came out too much. So that's why I focus on that. And that can go on for as long as you want because you're only working technique development. So know what you're doing. Are you improving your technique? Or are you improving your fight conditioning? Also, on top of time in the gloves, it's important to know what type of flow and energy you're gonna give off on the bag. So you can do flow where maybe I'm working my speed, I'm working my touching, my moving, okay? But I'm working nice long extension. I'm, lurk, I'm working on a lot of output. Some guys you'll even see have a counter. Someone's counting all the strikes that you're throwing. It's flow, it's volume, and that's gonna require different energy than you're doing power shots, okay? So your first rounds could be touch or maybe all touch this round. Then the second one is power. So that's when I work my power shots. But even when it comes to power shots, you can work your power shots as singles, you can work your power shots as doubles, triples, or maybe you're just doing power combinations on the bag. Okay, so again, single power. Oosh. 
as hard as you can or put it into combinations. <coughs> All right, whatever you're doing, it has that purpose, okay? So, another trick you can do is if you're working that single power, single technique, one of the frustrating things can be is the bag moving, okay? So you're always having to reset. This is where these stationary bags come into play, okay? So come follow me over here. So, this is one of my favorite bags to use because it doesn't move, and that's where you get to really set your feet, get your power, and work. So. Just for this angle, I can work my right kick. Hush, 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 hush. Okay? And the beautiful thing is I can change levels and I can really work my power and I can work both sides. You can use the same technique with your punches. Whether I want to turn here, the bag is still stationary. Another thing you can do with your bag work is don't limit yourself to the bag you're working on. Each bag can help you develop a different skill. One might be better than the other. So for example, the wrecking ball, okay? You can use the wrecking ball now to be able to move your angles, okay? A little bit more footwork, maybe focusing more on your uppercuts or knees off of the wrecking ball, all giving you something different that the long bag can't. Something different than the pull bag can do. And even here, one of my favorites you can use is the uppercut bag, okay? So you can mix in angles, power, you can shift sides, whatever you want. It's gonna give me a different effect. And I love this because it's good for uppercuts and it's a good stationary target so the bag's not moving. And that's when you can really get and sink your knuckles and get the power in. So when you do your bag work, remember, it doesn't all have to be in one. Today might be flow, next week might be power. You might do round one and two with flow, round three and four power, and five as a southpaw, maybe a stationary bag. So use the different bags as a different tool to improve your martial arts. So today's video is just an overview of the purpose of bag work, okay? So remember there are so many different tools, so many different ways. Don't just go there and get tired on the bag unless that is your purpose to do so. Put it in rounds, don't do rounds. Do a 10 minute round, do a five minute round. You have to have the different energy systems to improve. If you wanna work flow, if you wanna work power, if you wanna work quadruples, if you wanna work singles, you have the option, but do so with a plan in your head to improve your technique.